Right now, you're listening to the Rode VideoMic Go 2, and today's video is going to be a comparison between the Rode VideoMic Go 2 and all the other microphones I think you should be considering if you're looking at this microphone. And I will put my best price links on all of these microphones in the description down below, and just clicking through there will give you a choice of a number of the top suppliers, so you can sort of instantly check the prices of the top credible suppliers that I use and also have an affiliation with. As we go through each of these microphones and I give you the sound samples, I am going to tell you the advantage that these different microphones might have over the Rode VideoMic Go 2. Now, the Rode VideoMic Go 2 is so revolutionary that it has a number of advantages over most of these microphones, so I'm going to come back and then point out all the new features and advantages the Rode VideoMic Go 2 has over just about everything else out there. I'm then going to give you an outdoor sound sample and come back at the end and give you my recommendations based on what kind of sort of videos you're creating or what set of audio you're trying to capture. Now you listen to the Boya BYM1. This is the cheapest microphone in this lineup, and this is the cheapest microphone that I actually ever recommend. And you can generally find it around $30. It also comes with a whole bunch of stuff. It includes a little carrying pouch, it includes the furry dead cat, and it includes two different cables to hook up to your smartphone or your computer or your camera. So that is a whole bunch of stuff coming in this tiny little package at a very low price point. Now we're back on the road. Video might go to just giving you an audio reference point between the different microphones, just refreshing your audio palette. Right now, the sound you're hearing is out of the road. Video might go to. Now you're listening to the Deity D4 Mini, and this is one of my most recommended budget microphones. It really comes with some extra features that most of the other microphones don't have. The first thing it does is it does come with the dead cat. It comes with both cables for your smartphone or camera or computer, so it covers all bases there. It also has a input jack on the side of the microphone. So at a microphone coming in at under $50, this has this feature which allows you to run a lapel mic or a second mic into this microphone. What that allows you to do is if you are shooting a behind the camera and you have the microphone pointing forward, you can just hook up a little lapel mic, put it on yourself. Now you're getting clear audio from yourself through the lapel mic, and then you're getting clear audio on what is ever in front of the camera through the sort of little normal shotgun microphone. You can also hook up a wireless set to this. So you can use DDs or somebody else's wireless kit hook up a wireless transmitter that is going into the input port. Now you are getting the wireless signal or the audio from the wireless system, wherever that might be on one channel, and you're getting on the camera from the camera's position, the shotgun microphone, the audio that it's picking up on the other channel. Now we're back on the road, video might go to, this is how it sounds. Once again, just trying to give you a reference point between these microphones. So just putting this little bit of audio between the different microphones, we'll just refresh your audio palette and just give you a more recent memory to compare to the microphones either side of it. Now you're listening to the Rode Video Micro and certainly for the Rode Video Mic Go 2, one of the toughest competitors is going to be Rode's own Rode Video Micro because this microphone sounds absolutely excellent and it is about half the price. So it doesn't come loaded with features, but it's a smaller microphone. It gives great audio quality and it is absolutely bulletproof. It is the first on-camera microphone that I ever bought. And to this day, I still regularly use it. Even though I have much bigger pro-level microphones, this is just a great sounding little microphone that really has no fuss about it. It also comes with the furry windscreen or dead cat that the Rode Video Mic Go 2 does not. So if you figure the Rode Video Mic Go 2, if you're gonna use it outdoors, you're going to have to buy a sort of furry screen or a, a dead cat for that microphone. You're probably an extra 30 or so dollars for that dead cat. Now the difference between the two microphones is even greater. You're almost getting to three times the price because the Rode Video Micro includes that little dead cat. Now we're back on the road. Video might go to. I've got it boom just out of shot here, just like all the other microphones in this lineup, sort of at a 45 degree angle, just pointing down at my mouth. Now you're listening to the Seven Rhymes Minbo M1. This is a microphone you've probably never heard of. It was one I had previously never heard of, but it has a 
lot of the unique features that the Rode VideoMic Go 2 has, including the ability to plug it into your computer and use it as a USB microphone, including the ability to use the normal input port for your camera. Once you're using it with the computer, you plug headphones into that and you have no latency or zero latency monitoring. It also includes the two different cables, one to go into your computer or smartphone or the other to go into your your camera. So that's something that the Rode VideoMic Go 2 does not have either. So it's got a few extra features. Now, one of the biggest disadvantages of this is it does come with the dead cat, the furry windscreen, but it doesn't work very well. So I find with the kit as this comes is almost unusable outdoors and it tends to be a, almost a deal breaker for me. Now we're back on the road, video might go to, this is how it sounds. Once again, just refreshing your audio palette just to jog your memory of how the road video might go to sounds. Now you're listening to the Deity D4 Duo. This is a dual capsule microphone. It actually has a microphone capsule at the front of the microphone, like a traditional microphone, would to capture any of the audio that's happening in front of the lens, but it has a second smaller capsule, less sensitive capsule pointing back at you. For people that are vlogging or interviewing or ever talking while they're holding the camera and pointing at someone else. This allows you to capture clean detailed audio both in front of and in back of the camera. It does have a little switch on top so you can switch it into normal mode so it only captures the audio from the front. It also has an input port similar to the D4 Mini. This also comes with both sets of cables, so you can use it with your camera or smartphone or computer, and it comes with the dead cats, which is really nice, particularly at this price point. Now we're back on the road, video might go to, this is how it sounds. Really what we're just listening for is how are the details in my voice? How are the highs? How are the lows? What sort of reverb are we getting off the walls? And how does that compare to the microphones that you're hearing either side of it? Now you're listening to the Sennheiser MK E200. This is the smallest microphone in the lineup, and I use this microphone exclusively when I want to be really stealthy. It is so small and so compact, you can keep it in your pocket because it has an internal shock mount, doesn't have a traditional Ryko or external shock mount, which makes it so you can't stick that microphone in your pocket. It's all built into the microphone, which makes it pocketable. It also means that when it's on top of the camera, it's really small and inconspicuous, and I think the average person and wouldn't even know this is a microphone. It has two levels of wind protection as well. It has a built-in level of wind protection in the microphone. So without even putting the furry windscreen on, you get a base level of wind protection. And when it is in that setup, it looks very, very stealthy. And I'm sure people would just start it with some sort of part of the camera itself. Right now, we're back on the road. Video might go to a microphone that I paid for with my own money to spend two days making a microphone review video for you guys out there. Now you're listening to the Deity D3, and at this price point, this is one of the best microphones you can buy right now. Deity has just dropped the price on this microphone by 40%. So this is inc it's just incredible good value right now. And this one actually takes a battery, which means that it has an amplifier built into the microphone. It is the cheapest microphone that I know about that has a built-in amplifier and takes a battery. This means that if you have a camera that has poor preamps or you're getting hissing noise in your audio, the amplifiers in this microphone means you get a stronger signal into the camera, which will eliminate that hissing or background hissing noise. This microphone also has an auto sensing cable. So rather than come with two cables, it comes with one cable that you can plug into your camera, your smartphone, your computer. It figures out which type of device it's plugged into and then it sort of auto changes to work with that device. Surprise, surprise, we're back on the road. Video might go to, this is how it sounds. As always, just boom, just out of shot. Same position as all the other microphones. I won't do any editing and post-processing other than to boost the audio to make sure they all sound about the same levels. Now you're listening to the Deity D3 Pro, and I certainly think based on pure audio quality, this is one of the best microphones in the lineup. It has a longer shotgun tube than any of the other ones. 
and does quite a good no uh, job of eliminating those background noises, particularly when you're outside. It also has a stepless gain control in the back of the microphone, which means if you're in a situation and you're filming something and you see your audio levels are maxing out and clipping and means they're going to be distorting, you don't have to stop your recording and go into the menu system and turn it down. You can actually control the gain of the microphone from the back of the microphone with the little dial. It also has two levels of low pass filter, one at 75 hertz and one at 150 hertz. So you can use that sort of just right in camera or on camera on the microphone to eliminate sort of low level rumbling noises or wind noises or annoying background sounds. Now we're back on the road video might go to, and this is always funnier for me than I think it is for you because I don't want to keep changing this microphone between the microphones. So I'm actually just recording all these audio samples back to back and then I shoot the other samples of the other microphone. So I have just over and over and over said that right now you're listening to the Rode Video Mic Go 2. So guess what? Right now, this is the sound of the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Now you're listening to the Sennheiser MKE 400 and I think this is the best sound quality you can get in a compact microphone. Really, I don't know how Sennheiser has done this, but for the size of this microphone, traditionally shotgun microphones, the longer they were, the better they were at isolating noises from the side. This one is actually quite short and does a better job of it than most of the microphones in this lineup. I also think it sounds very, very good and has a number of pro level features, including it has a output port for your headphones while you're using it on the camera, not just while plugged into the computer like the Rode Video Mic Go 2. It has the high pass filter. It also has three different levels of gain on the microphone itself so you can get rid of those noisy preamps in your camera and eliminate that background hissing noise. It has some built-in wind protection in the unit itself so it's got level one wind protection without the furry wind muff but it does include the furry wind muff that you can put on if you need to. It also has both cables to use with your computer or smartphone or also with your camera. Now we're back on the Rode Video Mic Go 2 and I'm gonna take you through all the features and the way that this is one of the most versatile and one of the best microphones that you can buy under $100 right now. Now in addition to being a great sounding microphone when you're using it in an environment like this, I have just got it boomed overhead or you can put it on top of the camera because it has that USB-C interface. It means that you can take this microphone, plug it into your computer and use it as a voiceover microphone or for Zoom calls or for podcasting. And this isn't just a matter of plugging the microphone into your computer and now you have an external microphone. What happens when you do that, the first thing that happens is that input port that you would normally use to connect the cable to your camera becomes an output port or headphone jack. And at that, it is a very good headphone jack. It has quite a good headphone amplifier in it. So you can drive your headphones and listen to the microphone. This also gives you zero latency monitoring, which means that if you are doing a podcast or something, or maybe a voiceover, where you need to hear what your audio sounds like, you are going to know exactly what it sounds like because you're going to be getting it in your ear at the exact same time you are speaking. That's what the zero latency is. The other thing is if you need to do a voiceover for something, so you're doing a video, you can hear things happening in the video and you sort of need to use your voice and interject at times and layer over the top of that your own commentary. The microphone allows you to do that because the audio from your computer will also be coming through and you've got the zero latency monitoring. So you can hear yourself and you can hear the audio from your computer. This allows you to coordinate your voiceover and put it in all the right places. Not only do you get all of these features, but Rode also gives you software free software which you download from their website, which allows you to control a whole bunch more uh, functions in the microphone. You've got sort of low pass filters, you've got gain control, you've got your zero latency monitoring that you can turn on and off. The microphone also has firmware that you can update. It really is incredible that 
yeah, under $100, you're getting all this in addition to a microphone that really sounds great just straight out of the box and put on top of the camera. All right, so that's how they sound inside in this sort of studio environment, semi-sound treated tiny room, but how do they sound outside? Right now you're listening to the Rode Video Mic Go and this is just going to be our outdoor sound sample. Now this microphone comes with just the foam windscreen. It does not come with the furry dead cat. So I've had to use the furry dead cat that I have for my Deity D3 Pro. It isn't actually the right size, but I can see when I put the furry dead cat on, the audio meters go way down, which means even in these light wind conditions, the foam wind muff that comes with the video mic go to is not doing the job. So if you're going to use this microphone outside, you are absolutely going to have to buy one of the furry windscreens. Right now you listen to the Boya BYWM1. This is the cheapest microphone in the lineup and I will have best price links to all the microphones in the description down below. And most of the time I'm able to set up a system where you can actually instantly check between a few different suppliers and find the best price on whichever microphone that you are interested in. And here we are again, back on the road video might go to, this is how it sounds, how does my voice sound, listen for the bass response, what sort of detail are we getting, how are the highs coming through, and how do all those sounds um, sound in relation to the background noise around us which we are trying to reject. Now you listen to the Deity D4 Mini, and just to prepare you that these microphone samples aren't all going to be perfect because I got planes flying overhead, I got cicadas in the background, so not every microphone is actually going to get the same background noise comparison, but I am doing my best. Right now you're listening to the Rode Video Mic Go to, once again, just refreshing your audio palette, giving you a sample between the different microphones. Now you're listening to the Deity D4 Duo. This is Deity's dual capsule microphone with the capsule out the back and the capsule out the front. Uh, once again, a very versatile microphone and super popular with vloggers. Now we're back on the Video Mic Go to, this is how it sounds, just giving you an audio reference point between the microphones Phones. Right now you're listening to the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Now you're listening to the Rode Video Micro, one of the most popular mini shotgun microphones of all time and kind of the microphone that started this little mini shotgun microphone category and certainly one that you just cannot go wrong with the Rode Video Micro. And this is probably one of the strongest competitors to the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Now we're back on the Rode Video Mic Go 2. This is how it sounds. Right now you're listening to the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Now you're listening to the Deity D3. This is the cheapest microphone that I know of that you can buy that has a built-in amplifier, which is particularly good if you have a camera that has poor preamps and you're getting that hissing noise in the background. Now you're listening to the Rode Video Mic Go 2, just once again giving you another sample, another reference point between the microphones. Now you're listening to the Deity D3 Pro, long considered one of the best microphones you can buy under $200, and Deity has just dropped the price of this down to $139, and I will put a link to that in the description down below. So. At this price point, I think you are getting excellent audio quality. Like the Rode Video Mic Go 2, it does not come with the furry windscreen, so you do need to buy that separately. And I will put some links to the furry windscreens in the description down below for all the different microphones that need them. Now we're back on the Rode Video Mic Go 2. This is how it sounds. I'm just in this inner urban park. There is a little bit of distance traffic noise coming and going, uh, but for the most part, this is a reasonably quiet environment. And you should be able to just hear the tone of my voice and how it sounds in an outdoor environment, not an inside where we're having all those sounds reverberating off the walls. Now you're listening to the Mimbo M1. Once again, this has a lot of the functionality that the Video Mic Go 2 does, but at a little bit lower price point. I don't think it sounds quite as good, and even though it does come with a furry windscreen, it really isn't usable in anything but the very lowest of light wind conditions. Now we're back on the Rode Video Mic Go 2. This is how it sounds. Once again, just refreshing your audio palette, giving you a reference point between the microphones. Now you're listening to the Sennheiser MKE 200. This is Sennheiser's little pocketable on-camera microphone, and 
even though it's small and super portable, it is not a shotgun microphone. So it is a directional microphone because I think it is a super cardioid polar pattern. So it's only sort of shooting in one direction, but it doesn't have the interference tube that helps it eliminate noises from the sides. Now we're back on the road video mic go to. Surprise, surprise. This is how it sounds. Just giving you a sample between the different microphones. Right now you listen to the MKE 400 and for its size, I think it is one of the best sounding microphones I have ever used. And I don't know what they've done with this, but traditionally the longer the microphone, the longer the shotgun tube, the better job it would do of isolating my voice and knocking down the background sounds. But this microphone does an absolutely tremendous job of it and it is just a tiny little microphone. So I highly recommend this microphone. Keeping in mind this uh, MKE 400 is double the price of the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Right now you're listening to the Rode Video Mic Go 2 and this is going to be a background noise rejection test just off to the sort of a 45 degree angle from the back corner of the microphone I have a waterfall. So we're going to compare all of these microphones and how clear and detailed and strong is the sound of my voice comparing it to the sound of the waterfall. Now, different microphones are better at rejecting noise from either the rear or the side. And so what I've done is I've just put it off to a 45 degree angle from the rear corner of the microphone, meaning that we're going to take into account some of the rear rejection ability and the side rejection ability of each microphone. And now you listen to the Boya BY-M1. And once again, we're listening to the sound of my voice. How strong is the signal and the sound of my voice compared to the sound of the waterfall? Now we're back on the Rode Video Mic Go 2. The Rode Video Mic Go 2 does have a little bit of sensitivity to the back of the microphone. The microphones that are more directional, which means they shoot sort of more narrow out in front of the microphone, do have a tendency to have a little bit of sensitivity at the rear of the microphone. It's just based on the type of capsules they're using in these microphones. So I'm not sure if that will affect how strong the sound of the waterfall is or not. Now you're hearing the sound of the Deity D4 Mini. With all of these microphones, I've got them just about an arm's reach from me. And once again, I've just got the waterfall off, off the corner of the microphone at about a 45 degree angle. Right now you're listening to the Deity D4 Mini. Here we are again, back on the Rode Video Mic Go 2, giving you a further sample. Right now the sound you're hearing is from the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Now you're listening to the sound of the Rode Video Micro, and in my personal experience, as far as the little mini shotgun microphones go, I think the Rode Video Micro does one of the best jobs of eliminating that background sound. Right now you're listening to the Rode Video Micro. Once again, we're back on the Rode Video Mic Go 2, just giving you a further audio reference point. Right now the sound you're hearing is from the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Now you listen to the Seven Rhymes Minbo M1. Listen to the sound of my voice. How strong is the signal of my voice from the sound of that waterfall? Now we're back on the Rode Video Mic Go 2, just giving you a further audio reference point. The sound you're hearing right now is out of the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Now you listen to the sound of the Sennheiser MKE 200, and this is such a great little microphone. It is not a shotgun microphone, so I'm not sure how it's gonna go with rejecting the noise of the waterfall in the background, but right now you're listening to the sound of the Sennheiser MKE 200. Now we're back on the Rode Video Mic Go 2. This is how it sounds, just giving you a further audio reference point. Right now the sound you're hearing is from the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Now you're listening to the Deity D3. Now we're actually getting into some genuine shotgun microphones with longer interference tubes. And this one is also powered, so it has an amplifier in it. So these longer interference tubes, these longer microphones, in theory, should do a better job of rejecting the background noises and the sound of the waterfall. But who knows whether they actually do or not. So that's why we're doing this experiment. Now we're back on the Rode Video Mic Go 2. This is how it sounds, just giving you a further reference point. The sound you're hearing right now is out of the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Right now you're listening to the Deity D4 Duo and this is how it sounds. Once again, let's listen to the sound of my voice. How clear and strong is that compared to the sound of the waterfall? Now we're back on the Rode Video Mic Go 2. This is how it sounds, just giving you a further reference point. Right now you're listening to the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Now you'll see the sound of the Deity D3 Pro. This has the longest interference tube. It is the longest shotgun microphone. So in theory, it should do the best job of isolating the sound of my voice from the sound of the waterfall in the background. But is that really what's happening? Right now you're listening to the sound of the Deity D3 Pro. Right now we're back on the Rode Video Mic Go 2. This is how it sounds, just giving you a further audio sample. Right now you're listening to the Rode Video Mic Go 2. 
Right now you're listening to the sound of the Sennheiser MKE 400 and in my experience this microphone does one of the best jobs of isolating my voice compared to the background sounds but I'll be very interested to see how it compares to the Rode VideoMic Go 2. Keeping in mind this microphone does have the advantage of having a battery but Rode seems to have done an excellent job of sort of tuning that Rode VideoMic Go 2 without requiring a battery. So. How does this sound compared to the Rode Video Mic Go 2? Now we're back on the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Now I have not listened to any of these audio samples either from the studio or the two outdoor shots yet. So I'm gonna go back in the studio. I'm going to listen to them all. I'm gonna to come to my own conclusions how I think this microphone compares to a bunch of high quality existing microphones that are out there. And then I'm gonna come back with my recommendation of who this microphone might be for or who might be better off looking at one of the existing microphones. Now we're back in the studio, I've had a chance to listen to all those sound samples and there's one really important thing I want you to take away from this video and it's the reason there's almost 25 minutes of sound samples at the start of this video and that is because sound is really about personal preference. None of these microphones is a best microphone. It's all about what you want your audio for your video to sound like. It's about you listening to the audio from your videos and what you enjoy. And also sort of the way you want your audio to sound when you have other people viewing your content and the videos that you create. So even though I'm going to give you my opinion on what I think of these different microphones, just have in your head which one you think sounded the best because that is probably the right answer for you. Now there is one warning that I have to issue about the Rode Video Mic Go 2. It's something that has been covered on a couple of other channels and that is the fact that this microphone has probably the lowest SPL of any of the microphones in this lineup. And I will throw up on screen now the different SPLs of the different microphones and essentially what an SPL is, it is the maximum volume that the microphone capsule can handle going into the microphone without clipping or distortion. Now I think Rode had to do this or probably did this to get a stronger signal into the camera. So if you have one of these entry level mirrorless cameras that has sort of hissies or not so good preamps, normally you would have to have a microphone that had a battery to send a really strong signal into the camera so you didn't get that hissing noise. This microphone se sends probably the strongest signal of any microphone that doesn't take a battery that I have tested to date. And I think possibly that was a trade-off that they had to make by having a lower maximum SPL. What that means is if you are at a loud concert or you are at an air show or if you're a very loud talker and you get this thing close to you, you are likely going to get distortion or clipping. So for the people, the limited number of people that are in those specific situations, I would say that this might not be the microphone for you. And even when shooting this video, I am a sort of a loud, excited talker. I had this microphone quite close to my mouth when I was shooting the first take of this segment right now and I was getting distortion. Now I think most people are asking is this the best microphone under $100? And I think the important thing in qualifying my answer to that is that if you are going to use this microphone outside in real world use on top of your camera or on a boom arm or anywhere you don't have control of the environment and you might have a little bit of wind around, you are almost definitely going to have to buy the furry windscreen for this. That is an extra $40. So I think for the average person that is going to use this outside Side. This is not a hundred dollar microphone. This is a hundred and forty dollar microphone. Now you could potentially try to find a generic version, a non-road version of furry wind muff for this, but with Rhodes furry wind muff at price at forty dollars, you actually get the little rubber gaskets that go over the USB-C port, so that when you're outside, it plugs that little hole, so you don't have wind coming in and howling in through that USB-C port. So. I think if you are going to buy wind protection, you're better to just buy the Rode one at $40 and then just figure that this is a $140 microphone. So given this is no longer a $100 microphone, what is the best microphone in this lineup under $100? I think really when I listen to all these, I think you're either listening to the Deity D4 Mini or the original Rode Video Micro. And if you're looking at this microphone, the Rode Video Mic Go 2 at $140, you're looking at those microphones at $50 and $60. So that is quite a big jump up to go to the Rode Video Mic Go 2. And I think both of those microphones sound excellent. When I compare to the two, I think the Rode sounds a little bit smoother with a little bit stronger bass response. The Deity has a little bit more clarity, sounds a little bit more true to the sound in the environment. It also comes with the extra cable and it comes with the input port on the side of the microphone. So 
I don't think you can go wrong with either of those two microphones. I think they're excellent starting points for sort of an on-camera microphone or even for plugging into your computer and using for voiceover. So for under $100, those are the two that I am recommending. Now, if your budget is absolutely limited to $30, the Boya microphone at $30 actually sounds all right. So I wouldn't hesitate to recommend that microphone if you only had a budget of $30. Now, coming back to the Rode Video Mic Go 2, is it the best microphone under $140? Well, I think it sounded very, very close as far as the audio quality comparing it to the Deity D3 Pro. I think it sounded very close to the Sennheiser MKE 400. Those are both battery operated microphones that cost a bit more. I think it was right there as far as the audio quality goes. And in addition to the great sound quality, it also did an excellent job of knocking down that waterfall noise, that background noise I had in that one outdoor segment. So I think it possibly did the best or one of the best jobs of isolating the sound of my voice compared to the sound of the waterfall, which is quite amazing given it is such a small shotgun microphone. But I must say I do find Rode microphones excellent for noise rejection. It is probably one of the strongest attributes that I notice about all Rode shotgun microphones. But all of this is just talking about this microphone just like it's any of the other microphones that you put on top of your camera. But this is where this microphone, it's not only one of the best at just being that type of microphone, you can also use this USB-C functionality and plug it into your computer. And while shooting this video, I have tested a bit of that and I have been more and more impressed with the capabilities of this microphone when you plug it into your computer, including the fact that Rode provides you via free download from their website podcasting software. And in entire suite of simple podcasting software where you can play intro music and background sound effects and control muting the microphone and turning on and off and controlling levels and so if you are thinking about starting a podcast and but you're also thinking about buying an on-camera microphone this microphone will get you started in both of those categories that's something nothing else in this lineup will do. And it's not just podcasts you can use it for, you can use it for Zoom calls, you can use it for voiceovers. And right now I've just got the USB-C cable run into the computer and I just have my Final Cut Pro and I'm just recording a live voiceover. So the sound you're hearing is going straight into my editing software. This is something you can do with any of the major editing programs. So you've got that functionality. And in addition to that, like I had mentioned before, on the side of the microphone, the port that would normally take the cable that goes into your camera can now take a headphone jack or a headphone plug and you can listen to yourself so I could listen to the audio as I'm laying the tracks down. I can listen to the audio back in real time as I'm making the podcast. Like, this is an incredible amount of functionality for a microphone at this price point. And for all those reasons, I would not hesitate to recommend this microphone as the best on-camera microphone you can buy under $140. If you're interested in getting the best audio for your video with the gear that you can afford or the gear that you already have, that's one of the things I do on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit that bell notification.